How's it going everybody? In this video we're going to continue our SD-WAN series by taking a look at understanding the local data policy capability where we're going to, which isn't specifically just data, um, but it affects the data plane if that makes sense. Or I should say there's localized policies. Um, we're going to be focusing on We'll take it. We'll re kind of recap what happened in the BGP route policy video, and with those details, and then I'm going to walk you kind of through the high-level lo logic details that need to need to happen there. So let's go ahead and dive into how this actually works, because the, that's the really important part, obviously. So whenever you're creating a uh, a localized, actually, let me clear that out. Bump that up in size a little bit for you. Uh, whenever you're creating a localized policy what that pol what that simply means is that the policy itself is going to exist locally on the device on whatever devices it's asso assigned to so on and so forth and what whether you're configuring it via the CLI or through vManage it has to get it has to be on the device itself so with, if you're on the CLI it's kind of easy because then you've already configured it right you go underneath the policy command, and then you can go and create your, um, you create your lists so you can match on traffic. So let me clean that up a little bit. So you have your lists to match on the traffic, and once you've matched on the traffic, then you can go and list. There's a number of them. You can create a prefix list. You can create a basically a data prefix list. You and stuff like that. Under, once you create a list, then you can create your either your route policy, you can create your ACL, so on and so forth. So it gives you a lot of power there. Once you've done all that, and you've got your list created to match on whatever traffic you want to match on, you've gone and created your route policy, or you've created your access list with the sequence numbers and logic that goes associated with it. The next step is to take the name of the ACL. So you, for example, here you give it a name, or you take the the, the route policy, you take its name, and then you have to do something with it. For an ACL, you would go to, say for example, VPN1, then you would go to the interface, so int, say, g0 slash 2, and then you would apply the ACL either in or out, and you would call the ACL name. So you would go, for example, access list, whatever, inbound or whatever inbound or or I'm sorry inbound or outbound so on and so forth the RP you would go underneath like uh, VPN 1 supposed to be P VPN 1 you'd go underneath router BGP X then underneath the neighbor then you would go underneath the the AFI and then you would apply the policy here so you would say RP in or out, like that. And once you've got all that logic mapped, then you can go and uh, it, it's there. That's via the CLI, right? It makes it pretty straightforward to get all that stuff working and things like that. It's just pretty much the same thing via vManage, except for on vManage, it's a little bit different. The, the, the logic flow is the same, right? You have to create the list to match on whatever it is you're going to uh, so you can call something to match on. So you have a classification and you're classifying traffic somehow, whether it's an ACL, whether it's a prefix list or something along those lines. And then you can create your actual policy, route policy, access list, so on and so forth. Once you've done all that, on the vManage side, let's go ahead and clear the screen off a little bit. When you're doing it via vManage, right? You have to, you got to click on policies, then you can click on localized. And if you don't already have the list created, you would have to use, the first thing you would want to do is click on the custom options. And underneath custom options, underneath local, you would choose lists, and underneath the lists, you would be able to create your your AC or your uh, your data prefix list, 
your prefix list or whatever else it is you're trying to match on. Once you get that done, then you can take it the next step and go underneath your localized policy. You can choose what type of policy you want to create. Let's say, for example, it's an ACL. And then what you do on with the ACL is you create the logic. You say you're, you have your match, and then you have your action. And once that's all done, you save it, right? Then once it's saved, then you have to create a policy. So let's say you give it ACL X, Y, Z, right? You need to create a policy that calls X, Y, Z. So you create a policy and you call it, you know, X, Y, Z policy, for example. And then you would import existing and you would call the ACL XYZ. When you create that and you save it, then the interesting thing part, part about it is then you have to come over to templates. Once you come over to templates, then you have to go to the device template that you're going to associate that to. Then you have to go underneath to additional templates and then you call underneath the policy tab or policy drop down you would call this policy right here let me clean that up real quick you call this policy right here then you would say update and then that policy gets pushed to whatever v edge you want it to get pushed to now once it's been pushed you still have to apply it right because it's got to get from the v manage it's got to get down to the v edge once it's on the v edge then you circle back and then you take it to the next level. Then you go underneath the, let me go ahead and clear the screen off. Then you go to your templates again. You go to your feature template. And since we're on the topic, uh, since we're going down the flow of access lists, you would then go underneath your VPN one, underneath your, for your, uh, your int, so G0 slash two, for example, or whatever it is that you're trying to work with. And then you would push your, go. Uh, then you would, underneath the, uh, the ACL option, you would call the access lists from there, you know, whether it's in or out, and go from there. A lot of moving parts. I It's obviously more, more steps and more complications doing it through the vManage. But if you do yourself a favor ahead of time and you, if you plan out what it is you're trying to accomplish, it makes it that much easier to work with in terms of the day to day. So for example, if you need to create an ACL to block a particular type of traffic, and it's going to be a localized data policy, meaning that it's only going to affect a, uh, a few devices. From my understanding, and I have not taking this to the full length, data, there's a traffic data centralized policy as well that has a very similar effect. I have not tested that out yet, so um, don't quote me on everything. When I get to that point, I will dive into that because right now we're focusing on just local policies. Um, I, th those are pretty easy because it's a lot of the same stuff that I'm comfortable with on an iOS router, an iOS firewall, or I should say an ASA firewall. There is no such thing as an iOS firewall. Um, you can turn a few firewall feature on in an iOS router not the same thing as an iOS firewall. Um, you, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You know, create the ACL, map the ACL. That concept is pretty straightforward. Where normally in iOS ACL, you go create the access list and you create your logic, you match on the subnet, you match on the, the transport, the ports, and then you would apply the access group to the, whatever the interface is, boom, you're done. That really doesn't change a whole lot. You just have the extra step of matching on a particular traffic type. But you can still call in the vManage. You can you can uh, create or call a. You, I'm sorry. You can create an access list from inside vManage. So underneath the uh, the config. So that's basically how that comes into play. Centralized policies. We're gonna when we get there. I'm gonna start off with hub and spoke because that's pretty straightforward. There's a there's kind of a wizard to it that we'll walk through. We'll follow all the wizards. And then anything that doesn't really require a wizard or is a, like an extra step in the wizard process, 
we'll take a look at those as well and go from there. So um, a couple questions uh, since at the time of this, when you see this video, other videos will have already been recorded and released. And I've gotten some questions on like service chaining and uh, upgrades and some other stuff. I will be testing those things out. But as of right now, uh, I haven't gotten to some of those details yet and I still have to play with them. But um, if there's anything that you would like to see tested that I can maybe pull off, then ask away. I'll see what I can do in terms of um, making that happen. So until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with me in this video. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.